25 years into its existence, the AIDS epidemic continues to devastate the most marginalized in societies. In sub-Saharan African countries, HIV prevalence rates have exceeded 30% in some populations. Infection rates in Asia and Eastern Europe are skyrocketing. In 2001, world leaders promised to help halt and reverse the spread of HIV AIDS. With over 40 million people infected worldwide and growing, it's time for the world to ask, are they keeping their promises? Well, I think it is very timely, both in terms of people's frustration with wanting to do something about the epidemic and believing that something is possible. Well, how do we make our political leaders accountable? People are really going to keep the promise and be accountable. They've got to move much faster than they have in the past. In August of 2006, in Toronto, Canada, nearly 25,000 people descended on the city for the 16th International AIDS Conference. The purpose of the gathering was to reunite AIDS activists, researchers, public figures and others in order to reflect on the current status of the world's response to the epidemic. With its theme of time to deliver, the conference was an opportunity to address promises that were made by world leaders to stop AIDS. Policymakers should keep their promises in long-term care treatment and medicines available for everyone. Leaders should keep the promises they made at the G8. The responsibility for governments uh, that uh, have enormous resources and they can assist other governments with the HIV epidemic is to make sure that they give much more money to the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB and malaria. Such promises reflect the targets that were set out in the Declaration of Commitment on HIV AIDS, which was adopted by over 189 member states in 2001. Recognizing their role as catalysts for change, the leaders who signed this declaration committed to providing comprehensive, time-bound targets for the delivery of effective HIV prevention, treatment, care and support needed to halt and begin to reverse the global epidemic by 2010. Promises were made to provide adequate funding, promote legislation, combat stigma and discrimination, and strive to ensure all people have the information and resources needed for global AIDS prevention, care and treatment. According to this declaration, the world should currently be seeing a significant drop in infection rates among young people, greater access to life-saving medications for those who are infected, and greater resource commitment towards the Global Fund to fight HIV AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. However, current official statistics on AIDS paint a very different picture. I think it's very difficult for anyone to say truthfully that they feel hopeful in the face of the scale of this epidemic. It's truly overwhelming. I hear lots of platitudes and lots of nice words being said, but I just came from Johannesburg four days ago where I'd been at a health workers meeting and what I heard from them there is quite different from what I'm hearing here. The growing inequity in resource distribution between the industrialized and developing nations to combat AIDS has forced civil society to put a new target onto the political agenda, one that is now defining the global response to AIDS, universal access to treatment, care, and prevention. Talking about the situation in Russia, or even to, to get the political will that people are, are living in HIV uh, exist in the country, that there is an epidemic, you know, it was really hard to, to get, get that uh, understanding in Russia. And to, uh, now there is a political will to treat people, but still the treatment is not, uh, well, you don't have access to the treatment in reality. I've been involved in many sessions at this conference, speaking out, saying that we need universal access to treatment. And yes, there is progress being made, but we can't wait anymore. There are people dying, and every minute, every minute, somebody does not have access. That is somebody waiting to die. Universal access is, in some ways, a successor to the 3 by 5 initiative which was launched by UNAIDS and the WHO in 2003. 
3 by 5 was a global target to provide 3 million people living with HIV AIDS in low and middle income countries with life prolonging antiretroviral treatment by the end of 2005. It was a step towards the goal of making universal access of HIV AIDS prevention and treatment accessible for all who need them as a human right. Universal access surfaced during the 2005 G8 meeting of the world's eight richest nations. The outcome resulted in a call to the international community to develop and implement a package for HIV prevention, treatment and care with the aim of as close as possible to universal access for all those who need it by 2010. Various players in civil society, already witnessing failed targets and goals, remain skeptical that the next five years will bring the political will and funding needed to make this target a reality. There was a time in AIDS when there were no promises, when there was no commitment. Now it seems there are many promises and there's a lot of commitment on an international level, on a regional level, on a national level. When you, when, but when you look at the response really uh, on these levels, it's still way be, uh, behind what we need to do. It's, uh, it's very scary to even dare to imagine that in the next four years, we will still continue to lose lives if our leaders don't make the targets. It's there are many people out there who are on the combination of the We wanted to bring in the notion of accountability. It was really not there, it was not really present, and everybody started to realize so many commitments were made and promises, um, but no one was really holding them accountable. Despite ongoing disappointments from a string of broken political promises on AIDS, civil society realizes the incredible opportunities that exist to combat the epidemic by working in partnership with UN agencies, donors, and the general public to start holding our leaders accountable. In an effort to rally this collective will, the World AIDS Campaign has set up with Stop AIDS, Keep the Promise as its rallying call until 2010. The aim is to call on both current partners and new audiences to get involved and participate in keeping leaders accountable to the promises made over the past five years. Leaders have made promises and commitments to achieve universal access to prevention, treatment and care by 2010. Join the World AIDS Campaign to make sure these promises are kept. Start now. Visit www.worldaidscampaign.org.